a big gravitational wave announcement is coming on Thursday, and here's why we're excited. The universe should be humming. Every supernova, every merger between neutron stars or black holes, even rapidly shining lone neutron stars, the spinning stars, could or should be a source of gravitational waves. Even the rapid inflation of space following the Big Bang 13.8 billion years ago should have produced its own cascade of gravitational waves. Like a rock thrown in a pond, these massive events should send ripples reverberating through the very fabric of space-time. Faint expansions and contractions of space that could be detectable to us as discrepancies in what should be precisely timed signals. Collectively, this mix of signals combines to form a random or stochastic buzz known as gravitational wave background and is one of possibly the most highly sought detections in gravitational wave astronomy. And there are hints that a development around this very subject may be imminent with the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, Nanograph for short, organizing a coordinated and global announcement on Thursday, June 29, 2023. That's in two days. The update will shed light on research conducted by the International Pulsar Timing Array, a global consortium of gravitational wave detectors. North America's Nanograv and European Pulsar Timing Array, the Indian Pulsar Timing Array Project, and Australia's Parks Pulsar Timing Array, the new frontier in space exploration. It's thought just as the discovery of the cosmic microwave background did before it and continues to do, that finding the gravitational wave background will blow our understanding of the universe and its evolution wide open. Detecting a stochastic background of gravitational radiation can provide a wealth of information about astrophysical source populations and processes in the very early universe, which are not accessible by any other means, explains theoretical physicist Susan Scott of the Australian National University and the ARC Center of Excellence for Gravitational Wave Discovery. For example, electromagnetic radiation does not provide a picture of the universe any earlier than the time of last scattering, about 400,000 years after the Big Bang, Gravitational waves, however, can give us information all the way back to the onset of inflation, just 10 to the minus 30 second power seconds after the Big Bang. To understand the importance of the gravitational wave background, we ought to talk a little about another relic of the Big Bang, the cosmic microwave background, or CMB. Moments after our universe started ticking and space began to cool, the bubbling foam that was everything congealed into an opaque soup of subatomic particles in the form of ionized plasma. Any radiation that emerges with it was scattered, preventing it from making it any great distance. It was not until these subatomic particles recombined into atoms, an era known as the epoch of recombination, that light could freely move through the universe and down through the eons. The first flash of light burst through space around 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And as the universe grew and grew in the falling billions of years, this light got dragged into every corner. It's still all around us today. And this radiation is extremely faint but detectable, particularly in microwave wavelengths. This is the CMB, the first light in the universe. The irregularities in this light, referenced to as antisotropies, were caused by small temperature fluctuations represented by the first light. It's difficult to overstate how phenomenal this discovery was. The CMB is one of the only probes we have of the state of the early universe. The discovery of the gravitational wave background would be a magnificent replication of this achievement. We expect the detection and analysis of the gravitational wave background to revolutionize our understanding of the universe, Scott says. In the same way, pioneering by the observation of the cosmic microwave background and its anisotropies. The buzz beyond the boom crash. The, ver the first detection of gravitational waves 
was made just a short time ago in 2015. The two black holes that collided roughly 1.4 billion years ago sent ripples propagating at light speed. On Earth, these expansions and contractions of space-time very faintly triggered an instrument designed and refined for decades, waiting to detect such just such an event. It was a moment, monumental de detection for several reasons. It gave us direct confirmation for the first time of the existence of black holes. It confirmed a prediction made by General Theory of Relativity 100 years ago, 100 years earlier, that gravitational waves are real, and it meant that this tool, the gravitational wave interferometer that scientists had been working on for years, would revolutionize our understanding of black holes. And it has. The LIGO and Virgo interferometers have detected nearly 100 gravitational wave events to date, those strong enough to produce an, a market signal in the uh, data. These interferometers use lasers shining down special tunnels several kilometers long. These lasers are affected by the stretching and squeezing of space-time produced by gravitational waves, generating an interference pattern from which scientists can infer the properties of the compact objects generating the signals. But the gravitational wave background is a different beast. As astrophysical background is produced by the confused noise of many weak, independent, and unresolved astrophysical sources, Scott says. Our ground-based gravitational wave detectors, LIGO and Virgo, have already detected gravitational waves from tens of individual mergers of a pair of black holes, but the astrophysical background from stellar mass binary black hole mergers is expected to be a key source for the GWB for this current generation of detectors. We know that there are a large number of these mergers which cannot be resolved individually, and together they produce a hum of random noise in the detectors. The rate at which binary black holes collide in the universe is unknown, but the rate at which we can detect them gives us an, a baseline from which we can make an estimate. Scientists believe it's between around one merger per minute and several per hour, and the detectable signal of each lasting just a fraction of a second. These individual random signals will probably be too faint to detect, but would combine to, com to create a statically background noise. Astrophysicists compare it to the sound of popping popcorn. This would be the source of a stochastic gravitational wave signal we could expect to find with instruments like LIGO and Virgo interferometers. These, expect, these uh, instruments are currently undergoing maintenance and preparation and will be joined by a third observatory, the Kagra in Japan, in a new observation run in March 2023. A detection of the pop popcorn GWB by this collaboration is not out of the question. These are not the only tools of gravitational wave kit though, and other tools will be able to detect other sources of gravitational wave background. One such tool still 15 years away is the laser interferometer space antenna LISA set to be launched in the year 2037. Its base uh, is based on the same technology as LIGO and Virgo, but with arms that are two and a half million kilometers long, it will operate in its much lower frequency regime than LIGO and Virgo, and will therefore detect different kinds of gravitational wave events. The GWB is not always popcorn like Scott tells Science Alert. It can also consist of individual deterministic signals which overlap in time, producing a confusing noise similar to the background conversations at a party. An example of the confusion noise is a gravitational radiation produced by the galactic population of compact white dwarf binaries, and this will be an important source of confusion noise for LISA. In this case, the stochastic signal is so strong that it becomes a foreground, acting as an additional source of noise when trying to detect other weak gravitational weak signals, wave signals, in the same frequency band. LISA could there theoretically also detect cosmological sources of the gravitational wave background, 
such as cosmic inflation or just after the Big Bang or cosmic strings, theoretical cracks in the universe that could have formed at the end of inflation, losing energy via gravitational waves. Timing the pulse of the cosmos, all one huge gra galactic scale gravitational wave observatory, scientists have been studying to look for hints of gravitational wave background, pulsar timing arrays, pulsars are a type of neutron star, the remains of once massive stars that have died in sp spectacular supernova, leaving just a dense core behind. Pulsars wrote in such a way that beams of radio emission in their poles sweep past Earth like a cosmic lighthouse. Some of them do so at incredibly precise intervals, which is useful for a range of applications such as navigation. But the stretching and squeezing of space-time should theoretically produce tiny irregularities in the timing of pulsar flashes. One pulsar displaying slight inconsistencies in timing might not be much, but if a bunch of pulsars showed correlation timing inconsistencies, that might be indicative of gravitational waves produced by inspiraling supermassive black holes. Scientists have found tantalizing hints of this source of gravitational wave background in pulsar timing arrays, but we don't yet have enough data to determine if that is the case. Although that could change with the latest update in a few days, June 29, Thursday, 2023. And this is on Science Alert by Michelle Starr. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Please support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.